Hello, everyone. This is Frank Riker. And this is Darren Sands. And this is the Slaughter Lamb Podcast, a quick fire episode. And we're going to be talking about savage animals, the four legged creatures, and probably a little bit of two legged creatures that can go from four to two that we all love and adore in movies. Darren, what is your first savage animal in a movie? First off, I want to say that I'm glad we're not doing fish or anything wet this time. <laughs> Nothing underwater here. No, it's no. This is land creatures. Land creatures this time, because um, when you Google uh, like savage animals or or animal attack movies or anything, sharks like, come up. You it's know. just sharks and crocodiles and piranhas and that. So you really have to dig deep to find, uh, um, you know, some of the titles that we're going to talk about. Um, but my first one is a film from 2011, and that's Joe Carnahan's The Grey. Have you seen it? Yeah, the werewolves and the uh, with uh, Liam Neeson. Werewolves, werewolves, just wolves, wolves, just <laughs> wolves. wolves. Wolves was weird. Yeah, so so <laughs> they were so uh, believable. Yeah, there with for me, there's there's a lot of similarities with this movie and the thing. I think that kind of small mm-hmm. claustrophobic cast. It's it's about a bunch of oil workers who are, are traveling uh, in a plane and it crashes in Alaska. Um, and they're sort of led by a skilled uh, huntsman, I guess, uh, to survive this kind of uh, this bunch of wolves that are attacking them at night. It's a kind of slow burn movie, but it's incredibly mm. tense and well made. I, I made a bit of a, an error watching this film um, because I was quite shocked by the ending. Because those of you that have seen it, the ending is what everybody sees in the trailer which is Liam Neeson squaring up to this wolf with um he has like bandages on his hands and he's got broken bottles I think that he uses shot glasses yeah yeah the broken shot glasses that he uses within the bandages to attack the the wolf and it's the final moments of the film and they're about to square off to each other and the movie ends and I, and I was like oh okay that's 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 really weird uh, you know and we left the cinema and kind of you know thought the movie was good but the ending was slightly a bit of a letdown and it wasn't until i was talking to you about it sort of years later <laughs> that you told me that there's a there's like a easter egg in the end credits that uh, mm-hmm. kind of explains it all away now yep. i still haven't been able to watch that yet so do you mind explaining what what that was so all you see from the perspective of us you know the audience the camera coming from left to right on the ground you see Liam Neeson's feet and legs rolling moving to the side and then you start seeing the wolf's legs and they're basically both breathing heavy and Liam's got his arm around the black uh, wolf you know the alpha wolf and then that's it so So basically fought each other to the death yeah yeah which would have been satisfying <laughs> or maybe not for you no I, I i love that i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to watch the film again because i, I thought the film was terrific um, or you just go on the uh, youtube and watch the clip yeah i just kind of kind of like to see it in context of the rest oh, of okay. <laughs> What have you got next? So going on to your 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 dogs, you know, going from wolves. I'm going to go for their their cousins. Uh, I'm going to go for Thor from Bad Moon. Um, I've talked about this movie in our werewolves episode. Uh, Thor is a German shepherd, played by three different German shepherds, except for actually two German shepherds and one being a Bel- Belgian Malinois. Uh, Thor is the protector of the family, who's uh, invited the uncle in who is a werewolf and everyone loves a movie where the dog is the protector of the family and gets in the middle remember beast from the hills have eyes you yes. know he was yeah. he oh, i should have added him fuck it um <laughs> but everyone rooted for him in both movies 
you know, as, as the person, as the animal that's going to get the revenge, going to be the protector, go after, you know, any kind of harm that's going to come up on the family. This is what Thor did. Thor went after the werewolf, you know, got some good shots in. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to just say, you know, Thor, just because he was a protective family uh, pet as a savage animal. And he fucked up that werewolf properly. <laughs> First shot he did, it was go right after his arm. And then the, the second shot was he gets him right by the neck, pulls a chunk of his neck out where the blood just goes all over the, the wall of, uh, of uh, the, the kid's uh, bedroom. Fantastic. Fantastic. It doesn't have to be Halloween to be this scary. Okay, I don't think I've seen this film. I'm gonna to have to check it out, I think. Um, next for me is, I never know how to, to pronounce the director's name, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have a go. Alejandro Inaritu and The Revenant. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the sequence is all CG and, you know, a kind of, Six foot four inch stuntman played the the a guy got by the name of Glenn Ennis played the the bear on set, um, but when you see the um, the finished version of this attack scene, it's it's absolutely terrifying, and it's it's the, the attack on Leonardo DiCaprio um, by this kind of I guess it's eight to ten foot bear mm -hmm. uh, out in the woods, um, horrific scene, so vicious. I mean, he's literally torn apart but as we all know survive screaming ah it's just horrible and, and there's a kind of there, there was a sort of rumor when this came out that the it was sort of a misconception that the the <laughs> the, the the bear rapes um leonardo dicaprio it's a female exactly <laughs> but there he, was a lot you could tell because the cubs are there yeah, exactly. Um, but there was a lot of talk at the time that this actually, uh, this is what happens in this scene. And I'm just going to read you this little bit from uh, the research that I've done today. Um, so around the time of the film's initial theatrical release in December 2015, word had spread that Leonardo DiCaprio's character gets raped in the bear attack scene. This turned out to be a total misconception due to some people mistaking some of the bear's movements as sexually aggressive and forceful. This misconception was so prevalent that the parents guide website kidsinmind.com had to put a disclaimer notice on top of the content page for this film in stating that the scene doesn't involve rape in any manner. Incidentally, this rumor was one of the factors that brought more publicity and public curiosity for the film. Now, I had heard that. I I, I must admit before I saw the film I'd heard that the, the, the the bear has its way with him at a go uh, <laughs> when you watch it it is questionable as to what it's doing but it is just mauling him i think and and dominating him isn't it um but yeah the revenant 2015 a, an absolutely terrifying and vicious sequence of a savage of a, moment a grisly attack yeah yeah So I'm going to add on to that, going on to the bear theme. Mine, my next one is Bart the Bear from the movie The Edge with Alec Baldwin and uh, Anthony Hopkins, Sir Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, yeah. That, that movie, The Edge, first of all, it's a, it's, a, it's a great movie, you know, dealing with, you know, survival plus in the back of your mind, maybe some double crossing and everyone's after, you know, Anthony Hopkins' wife. Um, but that bear, as Anthony, uh, Anthony Hopkins character, Charles says, is a man eater and stalks him, even gets a, a guy named Steven who uh, accidentally cut himself uh, with a knife. And Alec Baldwin uh, was supposed to bury the rag that they used to tear, to claw his, his wound, leaves it there on a stick. So in the so in the flapping in the wind, so the uh, scent of blood can be smelled, and then but once you see this bear, it just stares at the characters, and also the point where they're you know chasing after him, the motherfuckers you know knocking down trees, 
<laughs> it's so a it's huge it, bear. Is this bear? Uh, so unlike the Revenant, which is real CG, this is real in this bear. Yeah, played by Bart the Bear, who was you know a bear used for a lot of bear movies, including the movie The Bear. Yeah, uh, you know who who died a few years ago. Um, huge bear, but yeah, they actually had a real bear, you know, but not chasing, of course, the stars. They were chasing the trainers. Um, but yeah, uh, when they use real animals, it makes it more believable. But I think nowadays you can't use real animals for the types of actions that directors are looking for. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just because this bear was stalking him, wasn't, um, uh, wasn't letting up. Uh, chasing them and you know when he when he killed Steven for the first time he can actually hear the screams yeah and yeah. him getting torn apart oh. and then just stops you hear the screaming and then all of a sudden dead silence as yeah. he's pulling part of him and then he's just licking it and everything enjoying his mm. his kill mm. but yeah, I would have to say the bear from the edge is definitely a savage animal for me somewhere between the law of the wild and the nature of man lies the edge. I'm not gonna die. It's today, I'm gonna kill the mother. Do you have bears in New Jersey? We have uh, black bears. I've actually had black bears. I have black bears in my uh, neighborhood. You know, we see a garbage topped over. It was a bear. I, 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 encountered, I encountered bears on my job and everyone's like, get your gun. I'm like, I don't have a fucking gun. <laughs> Well, can't you do anything? Yes. I'm going that way. <laughs> it's, and they say, oh, it's so dangerous. It's up in the fucking tree. How dangerous can it fucking be? It's scared of you. How big Shoot it. Right. I seen one that's going to be maybe 400 pounds and like over six feet. Ooh. They're aggressive. They're aggressive here. We have a problem in New Jersey with bears. Um, we also have a bear hunt that uh, people... Uh, partake every year uh when they allow it but yeah we have a so they have like a couple of bears calls then of, of these things yeah yeah they're like oh aren't you gonna help us i'm like no i have a stick <laughs> the cops have guns and shotguns you think i'm gonna be any help distract them <laughs> <laughs> okay so <laughs> Moving on, um, we can't do this without um, without talking about um, the 1963 Alfred Hitchcock movie, The Birds. Mm. Uh, so uh, this is a film that, that for me is just, as, I mean, I saw it when I was a kid and my dad showed it to me, probably in the sort of early 80s, I think. And to, even today, I think it's just as, as, as eerie and terrifying as it, 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 it was back then. And there's a few reasons for that. I think one of them is the fact that there's no reasoning for what's going on at all. Um, these things just attack for no reason. And this kind of nature fighting back for, for whatever reason is it's, it's just bizarre. Um, and the other thing is there's no score in this film. No. Um, and it, that just, I always find it quite, you know, there are certain films where you can get away with that, with not having any music whatsoever. And, and, and this is one of them. Um, those the bird sounds are, yeah, the bird yeah, sounds yeah. are the music. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is. It's, it's, it's terrific. But it, it's interesting that the, that Bernard Herman, who did the, um, um, the score on, on on Psycho and some other Hitchcock movies as well. Obviously didn't do a score for this film, but is credited as a sound consultant um, throughout uh, on, the, on the credits. Um, and as you said, you know, the sound of the birds is the score to this film. Tippi Hedren, who plays, uh, who's, who's the main, who's the lead character in this film, Melanie Griffith's mum, and is yeah. still alive today at 92. Yep. which I find yep. um, astonishing. It's fantastic. And she still looks amazing as well. And, and she did a, another Hitchcock movie with uh, Sean Connery. Marnie. Marnie. Yeah. I don't know. Maddie think... Marty. Yeah. <laughs> she, she plays a thief. You know, where <laughs> Sean Connery falls in love with her. Uh, That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it, there's some, there was some questionable sort of techniques that they used on set to get the birds to behave the way that they did. I mean, obviously, some of them, I think, were 
composited on afterwards. But mm -hmm. Rod Taylor, who's the lead guy in this film, had said um, years later that the seagull you're not going to like this, Frank. The seagulls were fed a mixture of wheat and whiskey. Stuff that can kill them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In order to get them to stand around as much as they did in the film. Um, <laughs> And also to give them that kind of, you know, angry edge as well. But yeah, it's uh, regardless of that, it's uh, for me, it's a, um, a a great movie and and pretty gory as well for for the, yeah. the yeah, for yeah, the time yeah. they came out. There's that one scene when she goes into the house slowly. Uh, it's an old school, I think, isn't it? Yes. And goes into the classroom and the teacher's on the floor um, with his eyes pecked out. Pretty and gory. Ch stuff, children were, uh, and the children were no exception to be victims too. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they descend on the school, don't they, and attack all the. Yeah, it's a great movie. Great movie. Yeah. Good, good shout out. They're coming! They're coming! Um, I'm going to go next with another saver of the family, and that is Nanook from Lost Boys, the husky, the <laughs> Siberian husky. Uh, not only does he defend uh, Sam when he's you know, taking a bubble bath and washing his balls, you know, <laughs> he jumps right at Michael in this fierce look where he, he knows he's coming up the steps and he growls a little bit. And then when Michael opens the door, you see the full, you know, pissed off mode yeah. of the nook and he jumps right at Michael. And uh, Sam's like, What did you do to my dog, asshole? You know? <laughs> but then also, he. he he goes after he saves the frog brothers from one of the vampires by jumping at him and pushing him to the tub of uh, garlic and holy water you know <laughs> yeah. I, I think Nanook is a kick-ass animal I was yeah. gonna pick Thor you know because Thor was was a piece of shit yeah, um, yeah. but I think Nanook was savage just like just like Thorn I should say Thorn uh, the, the white German Shepherd uh, but I was gonna I stuck with the Nook just the same way I picked Thor. It's because when it comes to their family, they are savagely protecting him. Yeah. Savagely. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I want to I don't have to say anything more about the Nook. I think no, he's no, beloved. Good choice. I think he's beloved in the horror community. Good choice, good choice. <laughs> have a seat i've got two and i'm just deciding which order to put them in i think i'm going to do them this way um my next one is um day of the animals from 1977 directed mm. by william girder um william girder um was a young director who'd a few years before um day of the animals had directed a jaws ripoff called grizzly he also directed a film called the manitou which was um uh, a horror film. He directed that the year after Day of the Animals. And sadly, as he was leaving the production of that film, he died in a helicopter accident, age 30. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I, I only just found this out today. I never actually knew. But Day of the Animals, um, <laughs> it's such a ridiculous storyline. Um, so get this. This is the synopsis. The depletion of the Earth's ozone layer causes animals above the altitude of 5,000 feet to run amok, which is very unfortunate for a group of hikers who get dropped off up there by helicopter just before the quarantine is announced. Now, 5,000 feet, I guess they're saying uh, above sea level. What happens if you're 4,999 feet? Is, is, is the... Is the is the coyote okay there? And then once it gets a little bit higher, it just goes a bit mental. No. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't go like, ooh, I, I need to kill something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like the same. It's not like, you know, like when these animals smoke weed, they're like, oh, man, I got to kill something, man. I'm so high. <laughs> <laughs> um, the cast of this movie is interesting because it's basically the cast of it's, like, it's almost like a sequel to Grizzly. The plot is very similar. Uh, Christopher George from Grizzly's in this film. Mm -hmm. Also, Richard Jekyll's in this film. He was in Grizzly 2. Uh, and Leslie Nielsen, who, who takes his shirt off and fights a bear at one stage. Oh, that's great. It's, fa it's fantastic. It's fantastic. You know what? In 1977, Leslie Nielsen was pretty ripped. 
It's a the it, he, yeah he fights a grizzly and it, I think I think it kills him if I remember rightly. Um, you didn't but, bury it in the sand. <laughs> no, what like creep show? Yeah. Um, yeah, but as well as grizzly bear attacks, there are rat attacks, bird attacks, wolf attacks, dog attacks, and uh, and I think it's like e there's like owls and eagles, things like that that are attacking people as well. Um, it kind of reminded me of another film, which is um, I think it came out around the same time, called The Long Weekend, where mm. they go away for the weekend and everything sort of nature, uh, all nature kind of takes its revenge on them. You know, everything's attacking them. But the happening? Um, yeah, the other, <laughs> what the Shyamalan thing? Yeah. What's yeah. your favorite yeah. plant movies? Birds, <laughs> birds dropping out the sky. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Day of the Animals, nineteen seventy-seven, directed by the late William Gerda. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 great to see all those different type of animals, you know, go after you know people with their different weapons they have. Of course, you know, like owls, you know how they they have flight with those nice talons, you know, and grizzlies <laughs> have the strength uh, yeah. and brute force, and and uh, Leslie Nielsen trying to kick its ass. You know, it's just, it's great. So going on to your wildlife uh, theme, I'm gonna put another one in there, and that's killer baboons in the movie in the shadow of kilimanjaro now have you ever seen this movie you know what no i haven't i i've seen the posters and i remember the, the poster's kind of great isn't it front with the, the the is it like a mandrill or something on the front of it or yeah yeah it's, it's a pissed off face and then you see on the bottom running baboons yeah 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 so the the story is is that the ranger is telling everybody who's visiting this area of kilimanjaro um that you got to be careful there's a drought season, hmm. and there's about 90,000 baboons pissed. <laughs> <laughs> so all you see is baboons really tearing apart people. Okay. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're fucking jumping at people, you know, you know, using... And as you can see, those, those baboons got... If you've ever seen baboons, you know, like uh, the ones in The Fly, uh, hmm. they have really big fucking teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to the point where, you know, in, in some areas of uh, Africa, those baboons are more fierce than lions, and some big cats are afraid of them because they can jump all over the place and use those teeth um, to cause some serious damage. And we see this serious damage in this movie by people getting ripped apart and eaten. Wow. Okay. Anybody that's memorable in this film or... Reese Davies, the guy who. Uh, uh, oh, Jonathan Reese Davis. From yes, Indi from India, uh, from uh, the Indiana, uh, yeah, yeah, Indiana yeah. Jones movies. Okay, and uh, yeah, he's in it. And uh, other than that, there's there's some B movies, uh, uh, celebrities in there, but you know, it's the baboons that are the stars of this. You know, right, imagine, right. imagine all these motherfuckers, ninety thousand coming at you, and as they're running <laughs> towards you, there's dust behind them, and you think it's just one, but no, the rest of the dust is the more of them coming at you. And you look delicious. I, I'm going to have to check. This sounds like a great B movie. I'm going to have to check this out. Yeah, yeah. Have I'm... it while you're eating a banana. About a savage terror. <laughs> that really happened. <laughs> In the shadow of Kilimanjaro. Okay, so my final one um, is uh, a British movie from from 1981, directed by a guy called Pierce Haggard, and that's Venom. Mm. Now, I, I I don't mean the the kind of the Marvel superhero film that's that's out around at the moment. This is um, this is a, a, a movie about a, a rich family uh, and. A bunch of, um, I guess we call them terrorists or whatever you want, but a bunch of kidnappers break into the house and take the family hostage, uh, for hold them up for ransom. Um, but little do they know is there's a black mamba on the loose in the house. It's a snake that's been delivered and there's been a mix up with the snake and a really poisonous one has been put in there. And the um, the, the snake's on the on on the loose around the house and starts killing the. Uh, 
the the the, the terrorists if you like one by one I, li- I like this film for a few reasons i like it because it's kind of it, i like the era 1981 london it's it was shot around the same time as as a, a movie that i'm really fond of called who dares wins uh, it's kind of the same locations interestingly the original director to this film was tobe hooper really and he yeah he he started production and went for a few weeks and then w- left the production and and then years later the director pierce haggard um basically had said that hooper had a nervous breakdown and so um, when didn't he <laughs> and so had to take over um uh, over the shoot it's it, it's also got a really great cast you, you have sterling hayden in there who plays the i think the granddad of of, of, of the kid um who's been uh, taken a hostage you have oliver reed klaus kinski and uh susan george who are playing the the terrorists now those two together oliver reed and klaus kinski i cannot i can't imagine what what that set must have been like with those two on there one of them who's incredibly intense and serious like klaus kinski and the the other one who's just a complete piss taker and <laughs> if you read about this there are all sorts of anecdotes about how those two hated each other on set and couldn't get along because Oliver Reed was constantly either drunk or taking the piss out of Klaus Kinski throughout the shoot. On every, on every film shoe he was on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so Ven, and Oliver Reed, by the way, if you haven't seen it, he has one of the best deaths. Um, <laughs> the, the snake manages to get up. I think trousers were quite flared back then, and the snake manages to go up the inside of his trousers. So, I'll, I'll leave that to you. But have you seen snake this film, Frank? I seen bits and pieces of it, and um, I remember my father watching it, and he was sitting there and goes, uh, "Cover your snake, Oliver." <laughs> and he goes, uh, well, "I said, Dad, what type of snake? Uh, you know, is I'm, I'm a you know kid that doesn't you know know anything." And he goes, "I bet you Oliver's got a spitting cobra." <laughs> I'm sure he has. <laughs> but like we said in our previous episodes, you know, Oliver Reed, I could watch any movie with him. And yeah, yeah, legendary, legendary actor. Yeah, yeah. Watch out! Whatever you feel, you will fear venom. Okay, your final Good one. Good shout. Um, my final one, since I went with dogs, I have to put this in. And this is Clovis, the cat from Sleepwalkers. Okay. Again, another animal protecting humans, you know, from, you know, either the supernatural or, you know, something that's, uh, you know, that pissed them off. So, have you ever seen Sleepwalkers, a Stephen King uh, uh, movie? Yeah, this was like the early '90s, wasn't it? Correct. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have seen it. I. It wasn't that great, from what I recall. The 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 cats steal the scene. So basically, the the story is that they have these. These su- not, they're not supernatural. I guess they're mythical in some aspect, but in order for them to survive, they have to feed off the life force of young girls, mm. and you know, and especially the matriarch of their clan. Um, this is another movie about incest too, because the daughter and son <laughs> keep on fucking all the time in this. Um, but they're. Their main, they can survive bullets and everything that humans can put onto them. The only thing that they can't survive is cat scratches and cat bites. Um, so they get to, we see the house that they're living in because they, they can shape shift. They can pretend yeah. to be human and they look like big cats themselves. Hmm. All the cats are surrounding their house and they're scared to death of them because they can kill them. Clovis is a pet cat of an officer who died while he fighting uh, this this kid who's a, um, a sleepwalker, and winds up killing the mother of the sleepwalker who's a sleepwalker herself by scratching the shit out of her. <laughs> and each scratch, there's spark of fire. So basically he got her weak enough where all the cats fucking jump on her and just oh, really? start fucking tearing her apart. <laughs> so 
to me, Clovis from Sleepwalkers, another animal that is savagely protecting people. There's my theme, except for one thing. The bear was savagely eating people. Um, I, I picked our, our four-legged friends. And I know you're a cat person, you know, and uh, would, you, would your cats uh, protect you or would they run the other way if someone were no. to break in? They'd be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> they wake up and be like, huh, and then go back to sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to have attacking cat if you could do it? Well, there's always that YouTube clip. Have you ever seen that YouTube clip with the um, with the dog attacking the kid? Yeah, and the cat just comes right and out of nowhere and saves goes, the kid. I'd like to see my cat that. be like that. I think the cat was like, "Get off my fucking turf." <laughs> yeah, that's it. There was nothing to do with the kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely, I had to put you know my second favorite animal beside a dog. I had to put a cat on there, Clovis. The Sleepwalker Killing PD Cat from Sleepwalkers. <laughs> that's my final savage animal. Good shout. Good shout. So that's it. That's that's that's, uh, that's our list complete for this week. What have we got coming up? So we have Cool Cruel Summers 1986. Yes. Next week. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're, we're back to one episode, I think. We've, yeah. we've we've almost picked the titles, and I think we're back to one episode. I'm going to try and avoid doing two episodes on this, because we'll never get it finished. No. Uh, but we're getting there. We're getting close. We're getting close. Um, we've also, you know, there's also a few more ideas of what we might do over the mm-hmm. next few weeks. We may come back with another quiz, I think, fairly soon. So uh, I think that was fun. We do it again live, but then we would do general horror movies. Is yeah. Just focusing yeah. on a brand. And I think we got a pretty cool prize for those who want to, you know, join us. Yeah, yeah. And also, um, we've we've already put this out there, and we're we're um, we're going to kind of um, mention this again as well. We're going to put a little advert out there for this. August the thirteenth, after the success of our Halloween quiz, we're going to do a Friday the thirteenth quiz. Um, So any of you who want to take part, just email us at tslmoviepodcast at gmail dot com. Um, we're giving away the um, complete Friday the 13th box set that was released last year. So mm-hmm. I think, like, is it like 16, 17 discs or something like that? There's a lot of stuff. This is probably the ultimate collection. And those who want to join, you don't have to show your face. You know, you could just put like a little avatar and just, you know, use audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did it before with the Halloween one. Check that out mm-hmm. um, on our Facebook, on our um youtube page um and it was it was great fun we had five contestants um answering questions on halloween and the, the great colin murdy uh won frank's terrific uh halloween prize so it'd be great to see some of you guys join us for the friday the 13th episode that'll be at, on august the 13th at 7 30 p.m i believe eastern standard time so uh let us know if you want to take part stick to the roads and the best of luck bye bye <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.